because pastors have to wrestle with a lot of lunacy in the church because folks won't grow up to the identity that God has set aside for them. You know, and we'll just be a whole bunch of re religious people just having a form of godliness. And I, I'm going to just give you one key that we need to understand that God has mandated something for our freedom. I believe that God is desiring for us to be free. Free from Egypt and Babylon. Free from the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, and from the religious tentacles that wants to usurp the, the authority that the kingdom represents. The headship of Christ in our life. Where the Spirit of God can have free reign. And He can operate on a frequency and the men and women of God can stand in the pulpit and expose to us the deep things, the deeper things of the kingdom. I mean, no, your, mat your maturity determines on what I can speak on. Remember Paul told the church of Corinth, he said, there's many things I want to tell you, but you're still walking as people, just like the people you left. That was my paraphrase. He said, you're walking as mere men. He said, many things I have to say, but you can't even, you can't even handle it. You can't bear it. And it's not just for to disseminate thought and to get you impregnated with a purpose that you can't ascertain. It's not even about that. It's about trans transformation. Well, sometimes the words that are spoken need to grab a hold of your heart and yank you into it. There's sometimes preachers and teachers can grab you and shift the matter. You ever heard a word that you can get me underneath and you just shift you? It was bigger than an amen. It was bigger than a clap. It was bigger than a hallelujah. Thank God for those external things, but I'm talking about something that just changed your whole psyche. And the whole trajectory of the way you lived previously has changed. That's what I'm talking about. This is what the Holy Spirit is at work. That's what the wisdom of God wants to do for us. Say your neighbor, that's what he wants to do. For us. For us. But we're like the children of Israel. Go to John 5. We're struggling. We're, 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 what was that? What did, say? What did Jesus tell me? They uh, swallow a camel and strain a net. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're trying to mend the pieces. We're trying to give a, a, a visual to, to the church. We're trying to give them something to, to look into, to look forward to. But the, the, the ability, one's ability to perceive what God is doing is not necessarily rele, rele, relegated, oh, especially right there, <laughs> relegated on how I expose. It's not relegated on my own personal uh, acumen, my knowledge, my knowledge base. It's limited, but the Holy Spirit will take something that I say or somebody else say and bring you into a whole other experience. That's that's not necessarily. Go to John uh, five thirty nine. Five uh, John Saint John chapter four, <laughs> verse thirty nine. <laughs> Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which what testify of me. Now he told us in John 16, 13, 14, and 15 that the Holy Spirit would testify of me. But they decided to hold on to their traditions. Therefore they, 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 they became a false witness. So when Jesus showed up they couldn't discern him. And uh, I could say a lot more but I'll leave that alone. Especially eternal life. You think you have eternal life. Most saints think they have because they read their Bibles and go to a church. They got eternal life. I mean, anybody know what eternal life is? Come on, raise your hand. What is eternal life? What is it? That you may know him. And it's in whom he sent. That's John 17 and 3. So it's not a doctor. It's not a denomination. It's not a confession. It's not a deliverance. It's not one of the nine gifts. The acid test to you have an eternal life it's a different quality of life. It's the level of intimacy you have with him. That went way over your head. Because we think if we have a large consumption of scriptures, that validates us having a relationship with him. It's not about what you do. It's about what he did for you. Yeah. What was off limits to a, uh, a people for 
thousands of years. For us now, we have access. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. To obtain mercy and have help in the time of need. We can come boldly to God. Why is he going this route? It seems like he was going another route. Because I need to let you know it's not necessarily just teaching only. We can have all the hidden mysteries. We can have all the knowledge. And we can have the spirit of wisdom and revelation come upon the house. And you get what I'm saying? We can know what the hope of his calling and exceeding greatness of his power to us for that believe. That's in, over in Ephesians 1. Well. We can go through all that, that he raised them up at his right hand and given us to be head over all things to the church. So doctrinally, we, we're smooth. But the glue to all wisdom is knowing Him and our relation and our relationship with Him. See, because teaching can have its origin from the study of the Word and yet not have a true revelation of Christ. All teaching, I'm going to say this, for many churches we see are so landlocked in their doctrines and their beliefs. They're landlocked. And many of us because we can know the inner workings of the scriptures, there's no outworking of the Holy Spirit. We have the dynamic of being able to understand what is written, but we have no relevance for the proceeding word. There's no sensitivity in us to the things of the Spirit. We are a pneumatical house. We're both word and spirit. You understand what I just said? And we need to behave ourselves wisely as such. <laughs> I'm almost done. You can have a heart trained in the teachings of men and still have difficulty receiving revelation from God, the hidden wisdom or the mysteries of God or the revelation, the apocalypse of God. See, the Holy Spirit wants to unravel us. He wants to unveil us. Oh, oh, I just heard his word. He wants to decode us. Mm -hmm. He do. I know there's a stripping, and I know there's, a, a, what I talk about in scriptures, there's a rise and fall. When he talked to Anna, there's a rise and fall. When Anna was prophesying to Mary that your child should be a rise and fall. And I believe the rise and fall has happened on a consistent basis. But there's something in us in us that's still unclaimed, that's still dormant. Remember unclaimed promises, there's some things that yet has not come to fruition. And because we've placed such an honor on external things, and I'm not negating those things. I, I, I believe in uh, belonging to a local church, those that are watching. I believe in church membership. I, 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 but I believe if you stay at, only at church membership, it's a graveyard. Mm -hmm. I believe that those are open sepulchers that the scriptures talk about. I don't believe he just told us to spend an incremental time, increment amount of time, which is a lot of amount of time. Uh, 30, 20, 30, 40 years is just sit on, sit in, just to sit. I don't believe it. I believe there's much more to our life. I mean, want to agree with you. I believe it. I believe it. I believe if we stay and, and just study uh, a study diet of doctrine after doctrine and doctrine, and we don't understand that we've been brought into a relationship with the Prince of Peace, uh, the wonderful Consular, Mighty God, everlasting Father, all those <laughs> Christmas sea thoughts that are so much bigger than our Christmas. If you were to dissect those four dimensions of his grace, you might be shocked. It's what the wonderful conflict is really the spirit of adoption. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The bite, you know, so when I say the hidden wisdom, I'm closing right here. I'm closing. I'm going to stop. We're going to talk about, we're going to go, I didn't make it over First Corinthians. I was just, I'm right here though, right here, y'all. I'm right here. <laughs> but as a precursor, we can't be so narrow in our approach. We can't settle 
for just being uh, accurate in our theology and sound in our doctrine. What did I just say? We can't sell it for just being what? Accurate in our theology and sound in our doctrine. Some folks say, I just want to know what I know. Well, what you know may hinder what God wants to bring to us. It's always been a problem. What's comfortable for you is, can be very destructive. We all we want to. I, I don't know about you, but I just long for the day when the Holy Spirit can just take me mentally where He wants to take me. But but see, when He does it, He verifies it through scriptures. So it's not just something you're on a tangent. You're not just some antibody. Amen. There's an order. There's a structure to it. You're not just goofy. I've had people tell me, well, I just feel so out of control when I get around the Holy Spirit. Well, yeah, yeah, that happens at first because he, uh, he has to tear down the fortification of your soul, the mind, will, the emotions, all those strongholds, those impediments. So it seems like you're out of control. But trust me, you're not out of control because the Bible lets me know that there, the fruit of the Spirit won't let you be out of control because one of them, one of the nine is temperance, self-control. So you can glean from it and say, God, I think I got self control, even though I'm having an encounter with you. And some folks live all their life and never have an encounter. But we're going to go, we're going to dissect uh, 1 Corinthians 2 on next week. And we're going to walk through it and uh, share some things. And I'm going to close it out with a prophetic word that I got. I don't know, I, I might have put it on uh, Facebook alone. No, I don't think I did. But I'm a, I got a prophetic word that's going to be necessary for us in this time of transition. Amen? Okay, y'all looking all for Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this word. Thank you for the people that listen to this word. I thank you, God, that our sisters are sensitive to you. This is not just some laborious sweat grunt of the bra, but this is our life. And I pray that whatever you need to do, take care of all the wrinkles and the spots and the blemishes, that we can stand up right in you knowing that these things belong for us. This is our inheritance. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.